Entering the ring on my left, young man all in yellow, weighing 203 out of Mexico, promising heavyweight Romero. His teammates starting his own group. They'll be called the Big M from San Bernardino, 238 Al Madrid. Well, here they are, presenting to you the bronze medal winner in the 76 Olympic Games. He weighs 275. Bad news, Alan Kawaz. His teammate, one of the presidents of the company at 238 out of Puerto Rico, Victor Rivera. Bobby Bachwinkle in charge. Welcome to Great Wrestling from the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. I'm Jeff Walton. I'll be with you for the next full hour of great wrestling action and what action we've got. A tag team event to kick things off in this, our first event. And it's a good one. It's Arias Romero and Al Madrill, who is forming the Big M against the R&R &R company of Victor Rivera and Bad News Alan Quage. Oh, Romero tackles Victor Rivera. Side headlock by Arias Romero, and Rivera is caught. Let's see for how long. Bad News Alan Quage outside the ring doing his strut. Oh, into the ropes goes Romero. Good tug tackle. Who's got what where and oh, back to that headlock. Very good move by Arias Romero, and Quage is a little bit disturbed by that. Tag off to, uh, but you got to be in the corner, says referee Bob Bockwinkle. He's a good referee. Bockwinkle knows what to do. He's always there, especially like when the Twin Devils are wrestling. Bockwinkle watches very closely if they don't trade places. Again into the ropes. <laughs> Nothing happened. And Kowage, oh, Kowage drop kicked by Romero. Runs back to Rivera, tags him. Kind of stunned by this Arias Romero. He wasn't. <laughs> Look at that. Didn't know, uh, thought he could handle him, but he's kind of fooled. Sometimes a little man can upset a big man very quickly. That's, you know, that's the interesting thing about professional wrestling. Upsets can be made. If a big man makes a mistake, and I've seen it happen, the, the uh, rookie or the uh, underdog can win the match, and I've seen it happen. Oh, good. Hip toss. Caught him off his feet, but Romero was right there. Side headlock by Victor Rivera. Taken over to Bad News Allen. Allen you now tagging and comes into the ring. Oh, open-handed punch right to the middle. Oh, biting! Look at this man, Coyd, biting the face of Romero. What a vicious wrestler this guy is. I tried to talk to Bad News Allen in the dressing room earlier, and... He says, I don't have time to talk to you. He says, I don't want, unless you want to talk about all the girls that I like in Hawaii, my beautiful body, I don't want to talk about nothing else. So, I didn't talk to him because I really don't know too much about Hawaii and I don't care to talk to him about the girls he knows and uh, his body, his beautiful body, well, that's another story, I guess. did want to ask him about his feats in the Olympic Games and the bronze medal judo winner. I know that he's a black belt in judo, also knows many more of the martial arts. And this is quite a question that I'd like to get into, some of his background as far as, you know, who he's beaten in judo competition and why he went into wrestling. But bad news is a very unusual man. He talks when he wants to talk, and if he doesn't want to talk to you, then he doesn't told me, he says, you TV wrestling announcers are all the same. He says, you have your favorites, and then you just run us down when you're up there talking about us. Well, we try to stay impartial. Good hip toss by Al Madrill. Madrill runs over and gets bad news Alan Quage. Hip tosses him into the ring. 
Now throws him over and oh, look at that, a reversal and Rivera goes head over heels outside the ring to the cement floor. Whatever you do, don't go away now. If you got turkey cooking in the oven, leave it there. Don't go away. In fact, what you should do is call your friends and tell them that great wrestling from the Olympic is on. And this is just our opening event. This is our first match on this edition of Great Wrestling from the Olympic. Referee Bob Bachwinkle warning bad news, Alan Kowage. You guys tag off legally now. The drill, stomping. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Bachwinkle warning both wrestlers. Warns Madrill about using his fist. Oh, well, look at this. Rivera was going to try to slug it out with the uh, bad uh, Al Madrill. You don't want to do that, no matter what. Now, Rivera, good tackle. Sends Madrill off his feet. And look at that leapfrog by Al Madrill. High back body drop. Arm whip and drag. Tag off to Bad News Allen. Bad News Allen comes storming back into the ring. Oh, wait a minute, a little bit cautious. He knows that Al Madrill is not a wrestler to be taken lightly. Both wrestlers hook up side headlock, and there's that fist, and, and Kowage says, no, 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 no. Oh, and there's a fist right to the eye of Kowage. Into the hair, but he's caught by, Al, uh, by Bob Bachwinkle. Now into the beard, and of course, Bachman goes there and impartial says, don't grab the man's beard. Bachwinkle, you know, he, he's fair. He's what a referee to me should be. Reversal by Bad News Kowage, and they bring him into hostile territory. And the referee steps in between them to break, but both men double teaming Alma Drill. Madrill knows he's got to fight to get out of there to save his life. Throws an open-handed chop right into the chest of Bad News Alan Kowage and says, come on now, Rivera, you want some too? Get in the ring. Rivera wisely decided to stay outside the ring. Al Madrill, he decided he was going to talk to me, though, and he was telling me all about the new Big M. That's the new company that he's formed because Rivera has formed the R&R company, which is Ramos and Rivera. And they have Bad News Allen and Big Ramos and Colossal Colosetti and Crystal Pete and all the wrestlers on their side. And Madrill says, I'm forming the Big M, which is going to be me and Mil Mosferis and Carlos Maca and many others. Hip toss! Send Victor Rivera to arm drag, and look at this, the tag off, and now comes Coage. And Alan Coage says, I don't want the man pulling my hair. And the referee says, he didn't pull your hair. Referee goes behind to look to see if he throws those punches in the right. But Madrill's not done. Madrill just knows what to do and the times to do it. Fans taking pictures, as you can see, there's that blue flash. Madrill sends a punch right to the unsuspecting Victor Rivera. Goes back to the side headlock on Ellen Quage. Tag off to Arias Romero. Romero now holding tight. Romero, of course, giving away a lot of weight. We're talking at least 40, 50 pounds here. Fine young wrestler from Mexico City. He's learned that the American style of wrestling is a lot different than the style he has been taught, but he has adapted very well. However, Bad News Allen into the hair, took him into the corner. Rivera, meantime, choking, going to work on him. 
referee warning Rivera, you're outside the ring, you don't touch the man. Coade bodily lifts up Romero, throws him down to the mat like a rag doll. Tag off to Rivera. And one little chop by Kowage to finalize the thing. Forearm smash by Victor Rivera. Open handed chop. Tag off. Romero's made it to Madrill. Now Madrill says, Come on, come on, baby, come on. This is what I want. I want you, Rivera. Rivera backing in the corner trying to goad him. He does. Bad news, Allen. Oh, Madrill steps aside and Rivera pulled that puncher. He would have hit Bad News Allen, his own partner. Rivera going to work now. Now it's Coates going to work, choking on the throat of Al Madrill of San Bernardino, California. Madrill never moved. You know, he, other wrestlers say, why don't you move to Bel Air and Lily Hills? Big home, have big fancy cars, but no. Alma Drill says, no, I grew up in San Bernardino, California. And that's my home. I love it there. And the fans know that I live there. And I'm always going to live there. There's a thumb right to the throat. The drill staggers back into the ropes. Right into the elbow of Victor Rivera when the referee doesn't see it. Now Quage. Forearm smash by Alan Quage. Goes back, Rivera gets him. Elbow right to the throat. Now Quage telling him, don't worry about me, worry about those fans trying to get in the ring. <laughs> Referee Bachman looks over to see if there's any fans in the ring. Victor Rivera now going to work, throws another forearm into the face, and let's go back. See, that's when Rivera used that elbow. The referee did not see it, and the referee, of course, has to see it to call it. Meantime, back to the live action. They have the drill still deep in trouble. Double mule kick by Alma Drill over in that corner, trying to just get a little bit of a reprieve from all the beating he's been taking from both men. And now the drill trying to come to life, trying to make the tag. He stopped from making the tag. Coage bodily pushes him back into the enemy corner. Now, Victor Rivera. Reverse chin lock. And he's made the tag. Romero comes in, and there's a punch to Victor Rivera. Rivera now in trouble as Arias Romero whips him high back body drop. Did you see how high Rivera went? Throwing a punch to the bridge of the forehead. Another punch to the forehead, and Rivera stunned. Now, the sheer weight of Victor Rivera forces Romero into the corner. In comes Coage. Coage a step back. Let me get him. Look at this. Two against one. That's totally unfair. They throw him into the ropes and they double clothesline him. And Coage tops him for one, two, three. Referee didn't see it. Your winner, Coage and Victor Rivera, the R and R company. We've got more wrestling. Don't go away. seconds and the company winning Rivera and Here we go. This is a good one. The bell has just sounded. Out come both wrestlers. This is the kind of wrestling that I like to see. It's a scientific match. We've got two scientific wrestlers. Of course from El Paso, formerly of Mexico, Chavo Guerrero and his opponent from the Carolinas, Big Ben. Now Big Ben has really won all the time on Great wrestling from the Olympic, and Chavo Guerrero, to my knowledge, has never lost, so this is this is going to be a good match. We've got some good wrestling here. Both wrestlers trying to get a uh, legal hold. Both wrestlers stand at the ready. Referee says wrestle. Chavo Guerrero and Big Ben. Chavo Guerrero, of course, being a former America's heavyweight wrestling champion. 
and one of the top, top brothers of the Guerrero family. Of course, all the brothers are just excellent wrestlers. You've got Mondo, and you've got Hector. And I understand pretty soon you're going to have another Guerrero that's going to be wrestling. So you're going to have like four Guerreros wrestling. It's a big family. And uh, right now with a big figure four, you've got Chavo Guerrero on Big Ben with the uh, question in the Big Ben, what do you say? Figure four toe hold. Chavo releases it. Big Ben now going to work with a headlock on Chavo Guerrero. Recently, Chavo Guerrero mustache, been sporting a mustache. Arm drag, roll over. Could escape. Chavo Guerrero. Now there's a reverse figure four on Guerrero. Chavo can do one of two things. He can uh, reach behind. There's a ride by Big Ben on top of Guerrero. Of course, still adding pressure with his right leg onto the figure four that he's made. Releases it. Tried for a uh, fireman's carry, but he seemed to have missed it. Guerrero taking advantage of the arm. Stakes it out. Keys it. And he's got a good top wrist lock. Many fans say, well, what, how, how come just grabbing the wrist is going to stop the wrestling from doing anything? Well, what you're doing is you're adding pressure on the wrist. You're twisting. And, of course, that's very painful. So every time you try to make a move, you add that pressure. And, really can't really do much of anything. A lot of wrestlers will uh, work on the fingers as well as the wrist once they have it. And that's very painful. Bending back your fingers and holding the wrist. Good escape by Big Ben. If you went by points, you'd have to give Big Ben the points. It's an escape in amateur wrestling. Good. Both men shaking. I like to see that. Mark, you like to see that? That's the yeah. Yeah, sportsmanship, that's the word. Good. I like that rather than some of the eye gouging and hair pulling. There's a good arm bar. Chicken wing. Oh, hot trip. Takeover. Very good by Chavo Guerrero. You'd have to give Guerrero some points for that. Both wrestlers. Temper's not really flaring, which is good. You know, a lot of times the temper will get the best of one man because of something. Going to that left arm, see what he can do with it. Chavo trying to trip him. Takes him down, sets him up, and once again, has that schoolboy ride on him. Now goes to work with a variation of reverse arm bar and chicken wing. That adds a lot of pressure to the shoulder can feel a lot. In fact, what you can do is separate tendons that are in the shoulder and then really have a lot of pain the next day. You wake up and think your, your arm is broken. You're applying a lot of pressure to the back. Chavo Guerrero is now has a goal to go for the America's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship that he held previously three times. And of course, the champion, the golden Greek John Tolis, holds that belt. So it would be nice if Chavo Guerrero would get a shot at the title. Guerrero had several wild matches when he was the champion with Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper was just starting out. He was early in his career. And Chavo Guerrero and Roddy Piper, they fought tooth and nail all over the West Coast. And, and both men seem to have wins and losses against each other. So it's about even, I would say. But the wild wars that Chavo Guerrero and Ronnie Piper had, that'll go down in the record books. And uh, it'll be as one of the top, top matches between two wrestlers. And right now, we got a good one here between Big Ben and, and Chavo Guerrero. We just don't want tempers to get carried away. So these men start to wrestle rough. Right now, both men are wrestling very scientific sizing one another up, trying to see what the weakness of one man is against another. Lace finger hand lock, test of strength. Both wrestlers now applying 
weight to uh, each other and also using the hands as grips. And let's see who has most of the strength with this maneuver. Muscles really straining, as you can tell. The old Romans used to do this. In fact, sometimes they would stay in this position for hours in their wrestling contests. Monkey flip right off the ropes. Good move right on top of Guerrero. Tries to pin him, but Guerrero upends him. Now tries to reverse it. Can't do it. Gets off, and both men stand at the ready. Good move. Good move. And I think Chavo Guerrero even appreciates it. He did. He appreciates that. Both men shaking hands. I'll tell you, when you know, you're taught to learn to wrestle, it takes a lot of time, a lot of years, a lot of hard work. And so when you meet another wrestler that also has learned your skill, and you both apply scientific holds, you appreciate one another's ability. And that's what the game is all about, rather than getting in the ring and, and, and kicking each other and, and pounding each other until one man is senseless. And really, that's not wrestling. What we're looking at is professional wrestling. Arm drag, take that. Arm bar by Big Ben. It may not be as wild or as colorful as uh, some of the other antics that go on in wrestling today. But this is what wrestling is all about, what we talk about. We've got a good card coming up on uh, this edition of Great Wrestling from the Olympic. You are going to see the great Goliath and Professor Ito. You'll also see Cowboy Tom Pritchard and the Golden Boy. And in the main event, listen to this, it is a good one. Al Madrill will return. He's going to do double duty against the mysterious masked assassin. Right now, Golden Boy trying to, oh, body slam, kicked away. Arm drag back into that arm bar. That's coming up all on this edition of uh, Great Wrestling from the Olympic Auditorium in downtown Los Angeles, California. And for those of you all over the country and all over the world, for that matter, if you come to beautiful California, sunny California, it never rains here. Uh, one of the places I'm sure you'll want to see is the Olympic Auditorium and uh, the home of the world's greatest wrestling stars. Chavo Guerrero just picks him up in a fireman's carry and sets him on the on the corner post, and uh, that shows you the ability of Chavo Guerrero. He's feeling his hand has been drained. When you're in that armbar position for a length of time, the blood begins to run out of your fingers and begins to get a little tingly and numb, like if your foot's asleep. Side headlock by Chavo Guerrero on Big Ben. Chavo Guerrero with the uh, upper hand. Big Ben trying to get a release out of this. And how do you do it scientifically so that you don't have to pull hair or use some other illegal hold? He picks up Chavo Guerrero. Chavo sets him down. Referee Red Shoes Dugan watching very closely, counting when he has to. Scientific wrestling. Last uh, edition of Great Wrestling from the Olympic, we saw a lot of top, top names. And on one edition, we even saw a battle of the bad guys, you might say, between Rugged Ron Starr and, uh, and the Golden Boy. In this edition, we've got a scientific battle between Big Ben from the Carolinas and uh, Chavo Guerrero. Father Corey Guerrero and, of course, brother Hector Guerrero and Mondo Guerrero. And all three brothers at one time held the America's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship.
Good escape. Takes him into a side head scissors. Headlock. Time running out. This is one of our time limit events. 15 minute time limit. Time is running slowly out. Big Ben and Chavo Guerrero. Of course, both men would like a win because a win would get them closer to the America's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Tempers are beginning to wear a little bit thin, I believe. Into the ropes goes Big Ben to secure release. Chavo's backed into the ropes. Both men break. Stand at the ready. Back body drop. Reverse pin, one. Only for a count of one. It was almost over for Chavo Guerrero. Big Ben, very cagey. Ben picks up Chavo Guerrero, slams him to the mat, tops him for one. Only a count of one. Snapmare by Big Ben, tops him again. One, two, only a count of two. A second away from a win. Another snapmare, takedown. Tops him. One, two, only a count of two. Into the ropes, and there's a good side body flip, and let's see what happens. It's Big Ben for only one. Big Ben now has the upper hand on Chavo. Looks like this could be it for Chavo Guerrero. Into the ropes, and tries for a hip toss again, but he's reversed. Backslide and pin for one, two, three. It only takes one mistake, and that was it for Big Ben. Your winner, Chavo Guerrero. We'll be back. 15 minutes, 47 seconds, scoring the minutes, Chavo Guerrero. Match, and it's a free-for-all is what it is. It's Cowboy Tom, Pritchard, and Golden Boy, and Ito, and Goliath, and all these men are in a mini battle royal to try to get that glove off that pole and once they do they will be declared the winner and of course they will win the big prize of five thousand dollars that's a lot of money that's why they're battling each other it's Pritchard throwing Ito to the mat in the meantime Goliath and Golden Boy battling I mean it's just everybody against everybody a coal miners pole match now, we can't see the pole just yet but maybe we'll be able to see it Goliath throwing punches into Golden Boy, and Pritchard now throwing punches in there. So no, there's no allegiance as far as anything goes. It's just who can get up that pole the quickest and the fastest and, you know, win that money. Now, so far, the champion in a coal miners pole match, without a doubt, is the young fellow we're looking at, Cowboy Tom Pritchard. This young fellow has, more, has won more coal miner pole matches than any other wrestler, and he's very proud of that fact. But now he's in the ring with three other men, and of course, everybody's after everybody. So you've got Ito going to work on Pritchard. You've got Golden Boy throwing a forearm into the great Goliath. Now Ito's going for that pole. Now let's see if we can see that pole. Nope. <laughs> there it is. There's that glove that's on there, I believe. And of course, there's a lot of money involved in that. But you gotta get up that pole, and you gotta get that glove. All I know is I think that the, the big problem I would have is trying to climb up that pole. I think if I could get up there, I, I'm not too fond of heights, and that, that would be a problem in itself. So probably our engineer Mark here could get up there and get it. Whether he'd want to is another question. But for $5,000, you know, anybody is uh, very motivated. Right, Mark's is very motivated. Picks him up and drapes him over those top ropes. Once again, there's no allegiance here. This is not a tag team match. This is a anything goes free for all. There goes Golden Boy. Grabbed at the uh, leg by Goliath. Goliath sends a punch to the middle. Goliath would like that money. He says that'll buy me a lot of tortillas. Sure will. $5,000, a lot of money. Olympic Auditorium is known for its fantastic amounts of prize money that it puts on various matches. Uh, its big 22-man World Battle Royal 
you know, there's a lot of money involved. It went from $11,000 to $100,000 in a few years because of the caliber of wrestling stars that get into it every year. Look at this. Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Look, there goes Pritchard. There he is. There he goes. That's the leading wrestler who has won more coal miners' pole matches. But right now, Golden Boy had his trunks. Ito's got his foot. Goliath's got uh, Golden Boy. Ito doing what he can to get him off that corner. I mean, we got a regular little uh, party going over in that corner of the ring. Not, not something I want to be invited to, I'll tell you that much. Into the trunks goes Goliath. Golden Boy now the closest one to that glove and that pole. There it is. There we see that huge pole. That's a 15-foot high pole. And you got to kind of shinny up that pole. Yeah, that's uh, the whoops. A little bit of uh, exposed backside of the Golden Boy. Oh, down goes Golden Boy right off those... Right off the apron as Goliath tries to just force him to the cement floor. Meantime, Professor Ito trying to get, he gets knocked off. Up goes Pritchard. Golden Boy tries to hold him. Goliath now goes after Pritchard. Throws a punch to the middle of uh, Pritchard and bites him on the nose. Oh, come on, Goliath. Throws him into that corner buckle. This gives a clear shot for Golden Boy to get to that glove. Goliath leaps up on that corner. The fans are rooting for Cowboy Tom Pritchard, but he doesn't seem to be anywhere near that. He shakes both Goliath and Golden Boy off. Goes up, heads up. Almost, almost, just, just the arms reach away from that. Pulled away at the trunks by Golden Boy, and, and he, now piggyback riding Ito. Now they're kicking the uh, champion of pole matches. Pritchard. Goliath gets a mule kick by Ito. Throws an open-handed chop into the chest of Golden Boy. Ito now getting Golden Boy out of the way, or, or Goliath, and Golden Boy in the meantime heading for that pole. He's being very unsteady about himself on those ropes. Now Pritchard trying to take him down. Goliath goes back to work on Golden Boy, pulling him by the hair. Ito, meanwhile, has Pritchard. So we've got more of our wrestling here. Question is, who's going to get that thing off the pole? That's the big question. There's another question I'd like to ask, too. But... Oh, Goliath looks like he's got the uh, position, but he's held by Pritchard. Ito now going, now all three of them have Goliath and they just pull him down. I mean, there's nowhere Goliath's gonna go. Goliath being hit by the back, hit at the back, on the back. And now Goliath almost swallowed his gum, I think. He always chews gum when he wrestles. <laughs> I think Goliath's madder that he almost swallowed his gum than anything else. Uh-oh, here we go. We got some serious business here. Ito throwing punches, and now Goliath kicking Ito and saying, what, what's, what, what, what you do, what you do? In the meantime, Cowboy Tom Pritchard, oh, going for the, oh, whoa, he stopped right at that corner buckle. And they're going to work pulling his trunks. And they just throw him off. Golden Boy now racing toward that pole, and again, he's grabbed at the trunks. I mean, everybody's been up there. Look at this. Goliath now throwing punches into the middle of Golden Boy. Ito gives him a kick. Razzle dazzle. Who's got what where? Look at this. We've got all men going every which way. Four yards. Oh, all the men colliding there. Pritchard dumps Golden Boy. And now we've got all the men in the ring, and Golden Boy sees his opportunity. Drop kick sends Golden Boy up outside the ring. Here comes the champion of pole matches. Come on. There he goes. He's headed for the top. Is he going to do it? He's got the glove. He has got the glove, he has won the match, and the $5,000 prize. Once again, Cowboy Tom Pritchard. We'll be back with more. Don't go away.
What a main event it is. Referee Ken Farber for this, our special main event. Al Madrill back after tag team action against the Assassin. And let me tell you something, Madrill has no love for this Assassin. It was the Assassin who came into a match that he had with uh, Ron Starr. It was Al Madrill and Ron Starr, and it was a battle that everyone was waiting for, and it was the Assassin that interfered in the match. Therefore, Al Madrill said, I want the Assassin. And this is the match, right here, right now, on Great Wrestling from the Olympic. Al Madrill says, nobody interferes in my matches, and I want it known right here, right now, this is the way it is. But in the meantime, in the corner comes the Golden Greek, the America's heavyweight champion, John Tolis. Into the hair goes the assassin, and he dumps Al Madrill. Both wrestlers, Duke's ready. Referee Ken Farber watching very closely outside the ring. Madrill also keeping an eye on Golden Greek John Tolis. Tolis, the new America's heavyweight wrestling champion, having held the title four times previously. Into the trunks again goes the assassin, and Madrill is hot. In comes Tolis, or starts to come in. The assassin and Tolis have been uh, partners as of late. They've wrestled each other, too. They've got a respect for each other, healthy respect. I'd like to know who this assassin is. He's a very strange wrestler. Very, very knowledgeable in the wrestling game. Farber says, look, this is a wrestling match, not a boxing match. You know, hold your fists. Don't hit each other. Or I'll have to disqualify it. Tug tackle. Madrill comes off the other side of the ropes, waiting for the assassin, the assassin. Reverse hip toss, and the assassin's down. In the meantime, the Golden Greek, the America's champion, Tolis, calls the assassin over and whispers instructions on what to do next into the ears of the assassin. The assassin seems to be listening. Let's see if he can carry out Tolis's dastardly plan. Lace finger hand lock, test of strength. Reversal by Almadrill. That should bring the assassin to his knees because the pressure is on the fingers. Reversed. It does. Down his knees. That stomps the fingers. Can you imagine having your fingers stomped? Oh, that's got to hurt. I just wiggle my fingers. Lace finger hand lock again. Now I think the assassin figured, ah, oh, nobody there, <laughs> and he's punched. The assassin wanted to stomp Madrill's fingers, and Tolis says, that's unfair, that's unfair. Madrill says, come on, Tolis, I'll give you a taste of the medicine, too. Side headlock by the assassin. Top wrist lock, reversal by Al Madrill. Takedown into an arm bar. And the assassin shaking his head, no, I didn't pull any hair. Assassin says, no, I didn't pull any hair. I didn't pull any trunks. He says, the man just fell down. Tolis distracting the referee as the assassin smothers and chokes Al Madrill. In all rights, I don't think that the America's champion, Tolis, has a seconds license. Here comes Madrill. Good tug tackle. Oh, there he tried for a hip toss and he missed. Good arm drag takedown by the assassin. And the assassin says, ah, you're right, Tolis. I listened to what you said. You're right. Now Al Madrill, question is in, do you submit? Madrill saying, nope, no, 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 no. Ken Farber saying, just watch what you're doing. He does not submit. Madrill reversing it, gets to his feet, cocks his fist, and of course Farber says, don't use the fist, and while he does, the assassin pulls Madrill's hair to get him off balance.
armbar by the assassin. This is our main event here on Great Wrestling from the Olympic. It's a good main event. It's a grudge main event. Al Madrill against the assassin. Like I say, this is a match that was built up uh, over several weeks because Al Madrill wrestled Ron Starr and the assassin interfered and Madrill said, I want the assassin and this is the match. This is the grudge match. But in the meantime, the assassin's new comrade, the Golden Greek, John Tolis, is at ringside to watch his partner. And of course, Madrill doesn't have anybody at ringside because he doesn't need anybody. That's the whole thing about it. Elbows by Madrill. Gets the ropes. Tug tackle. Down goes the assassin. Leapfrog by Al Madrill. And oh, he's caught with a punch by the assassin. Arm drags him, takes him down, and goes back to work on that arm bar. Madrill has really met a tough man in this assassin. And Tolis says, once you get him down, pound him. Pound him. Madrill gets to his feet. Threatens to throw a fist. He's taken down into the hair. Once again, the assassin using the ropes for leverage. The referee has to see it to call it. He asks Tolis, did you pull the ropes? Tolis says no. Once again, the assassin uses that rope for leverage. See how the rope is dancing? There he goes. He's holding onto the ropes. That's totally illegal in wrestling. The referee looking up. Thinks Tolis is doing it, but the assassin actually has the ropes. Farber trying to watch the count, so he's not really watching what the assassin's doing and using those ropes for leverage. Tolis, in the meantime, is yelling instructions to the assassin on how to finish him. And there, he caught him. I believe he caught him. Nope. I thought Farber saw it. Yes, he did not. Stakes out the arm. Stomps away at it. The drill rolls to the outside of the apron. The drill has, now he's outside the ring. He's got a 20 count. He's in bad territory. Oh, Tolis goes to work. Tolis stomping the shoulders in the midsection. A golden Greek. I don't know why Tolis has to do something like that. But all I know is I'm sure Madrill will want some sweet revenge against the golden Greek. Believe me. Drill, feeling the effects of being kicked by Tolis, now goes over to Tolis. Tolis backpedaling away, saying, hey, count him out, count him out. The referee does that, he starts his count. Men of record are Alma Drill and the Assassin, not Tolis. Assassin going to work, stomping, clubbing Alma Drill. Kicks him, trying to kick him outside that ring. On the apron, you have a 10 count to get back in. On the cement floor outside the ring, you have a 20 count. Get back. Tolas now going to work on Madrill as the referee is distracted by the assassin. There's that open handed karate thrust. The assassin throws Madrill's head into that corner buckle. Madrill backs off, topped by the assassin for one two, and he's dumped the assassin. <laughs> the assassin now throwing Madrill into that corner pad. The assassin having his way with the former America's champion and world tag team champion, Al Madrill, out of San Bernardino, California. Madrill feeling the effects of those punches. Now Madrill coming back, trying with every ounce of energy he's got in his body. He does it, he throws that right. That stuns the assassin, there's a left to the middle. Madrill getting his strength back. Now it's Madrill, Madrill throwing a kick into the middle of the assassin, left and right combinations. There's a beal to the center of the mat. Madrill going to work. Throwing those punches in there, rakes at the eyes in the mask. 
whips the assassin into the opposite corner, reverses him. Now Madrill goes on out after Tolis. Tolis insulting Madrill. Meantime, the assassin has clubbed him from behind. Picks him up. Backbreaker. Tops him for one, two, only two. A punch by Al Madrill. Another punch. Down goes the assassin. And the fans are rooting Al Madrill on. Into the ropes goes the assassin. And here comes that flying shoulder press that Madrill does so well. There it is again. A, oh, a drop kick. Nobody there. The assassin now picks up Madrill. Madrill does a backslide behind him. Goes to work. A reverse flying cradle into a small package. One, two, three. That's all she wrote. The winner, Al Madrill and Tolis is furious. This has been our main event. And wrestling fans, we hope you enjoyed it. We've got more wrestling coming up. Here's Jimmy Lennon. Scoring the win, Al Madrill.